Part 2 of the series is set in the year 1972. It begins with the Apollo 15 spacecraft where crew members Ed, Sedwick, and Molly are on board. They are four days into the mission of finding ice on the moon. As the three are in orbit and are approaching their landing site, Mission Control gets hold of new satellite images and they realize that there is a very slim chance that ice will be found near their designated landing spot. So they are left with two options, either go along with the original plan or to change course, and instead land on unknown territory at the Shackleton Crater, where there is a big chance of discovering something. Ed and Sedgwick are on board with the latter option, but Molly is hesitant to change the plan because of all the potential risks and dangers. Back in Mission Control, officials talk with President Richard Nixon's representative who wants them to change course to the Shackleton Crater. The reason behind this is that Nixon wants America to be the first country in the world with a lunar base, and doesn't want to wait for another mission as the Soviets might beat them to it. While NASA agrees that a change in the course of landing is possible, they leave the decision up to the crew members because of the tremendous amount of risk. After a lot of back and forth, Ed and Sedwick convince Molly and so they head for their new landing site. Sedwick pilots the command and service module, which is in orbit of the moon while Ed and Molly make their way over Shackleton Crater. They fortunately make a safe landing. Shortly after they are all over the headlines as Molly becomes the first person to step foot on the moon. Meanwhile, Ed's wife, Karen hosts a NASA watch party where she invites all her friends and neighbors including Molly's husband Wayne. Later, as Wayne talks to Karen, it becomes clear that he is worried for Molly's safety. When he tries to discuss the potential accidents that might occur on the moon, Karen immediately shuts him down as she doesn't even want to entertain such thoughts. Later, Karen discovers that Wayne had consumed and brought illegal narcotics to her party, much to her horror. The scene then cuts to an astronaut named Danielle, who welcomes her husband, Clayton, back. He has just returned after serving in the Vietnamese War. On their drive back home, Danielle reveals to him that she has been assigned to the next Apollo mission crew. The following day, she introduces Clayton to her commanding officer Gordo at a bar. The three consume alcohol and the two men end up getting into a heated argument over the Vietnam War. However, before things could escalate, Danielle calms her husband down and escorts him away. In the meantime, Karen goes to confront Wayne for bringing narcotics to her party as it could ruin her reputation and land her in jail. However, there, she finds Wayne's apartment in a filthy state and filled with strange paintings drawn by Wayne, one of which depicts a horrific spacecraft accident. This causes Wayne to have an emotional breakdown. He admits that he has been having recurring dreams of Molly perishing in a space accident, and he uses narcotics to keep himself from spiraling. Karen empathizes with him and comforts him. She also comes clean about having a recurring nightmare herself. The next day, Wayne goes to Karen's watch party again and brings with him a painting he made based on Karen's nightmare. She is taken aback but she accepts the gift. The series then cuts to the last day of the Apollo 15 mission where Ed and Molly have been unsuccessful in finding ice. Mission Control hypothesizes that if there's no ice on the surface, there could possibly be ice inside the crater, where no light has entered for almost 2 billion years. So, Ed and Molly decide to hopefully complete their mission by lowering Molly into the Shackleton crater via a cable from a land rover and an improvised winch. As she descends, everyone in the mission control watches nervously via a live video feed from Molly's suit. Inside the pitch black crater, she is able to find a cave full of ice with a flashlight, much to everyone's joy. She takes a sample for testing, and afterwards, she and Ed successfully make it back to the lunar module before setting course for Earth. The scene then cuts to two years in the future to October 12, 1973 where NASA manages to remotely land their first moon base called Jamestown on the edge of Shackleton Crater. The base is upgraded to be a habitation module, where astronauts can stay and research for many months. It is now ready for the next Apollo mission crew. Following this, we are taken to August 24, 1974 where the Apollo 23 rocket is about to launch. It turns out that Ed, Gordo and Danielle who are currently stationed in the Jamestown module on the moon, are to be replaced by the crew members of Apollo 23. Meanwhile back at Mission Control, Chief of the Astronaut Office, Deke Slayton is on a call with the Apollo 22 crew consisting of Ed, Gordo, and Danielle. NASA Administrator Weissner announces on behalf of the newly appointed President Kennedy, the first woman flight director, Irene Hendricks. This upsets a senior member of Mission Control named Margot who was hoping to assume the position. Meanwhile, at the launch site, things seem relatively calm in the minutes leading up to launch, and Jean Krantz, the new director of Johnson Space Center comes out to the launch platform to wish the Apollo 23 astronauts good luck. The scene cuts to a bar where women gather to celebrate the passing of the Equal Rights Amendment Act. Among the crowd, NASA astronaut Ellen and her NASA engineer boyfriend Larry are also present. 
It's then revealed that Ellen and Larry are actually gay, and they are pretending to be in a relationship because they are afraid of losing their jobs due to the taboo attached to homosexuality. Currently, Ellen is secretly dating another woman. In the meantime, with their fathers away, Ed and Gordo's sons, Shane and Danny respectively, act out in school and as a result, their mothers, Karen and Tracy are called. However, because of Tracy's job at NASA, Karen goes to school acting as both the boy's guardian. Back at the Apollo 23 launch site, the rocket suddenly explodes, claiming the lives of director Gene and other workers nearby, much to the horror of flight director Irene and others, who watch from the mission control. The episode then cuts to 60 days after the explosion where Ed, Danielle, and Gordo are still on the moon conducting experiments. They have been receiving supplies via unmanned Titan rockets while NASA's Board of Inquiry tries to identify the cause of the explosion of the Apollo 23 rocket. It's then revealed that Gene and 11 other people died due to the explosion, but the astronauts on board managed to survive by using an emergency launch, sustaining only minor injuries. Meanwhile, at a meeting, an FBI agent named Gavin Donahue tells Flight Director Irene, Chief of Astronaut Office Deke, and Administrator Weissner about the possibility of Russians' involvement in the explosion of Apollo 23. Therefore, Weissner agrees to allow the FBI to interrogate every member of his staff. Shortly after, Margot the senior mission control member is called in by Weissner, and he asks her to collect a report on the Apollo 23 rocket from old mentor, former NASA engineer Werner von Braun. It's then revealed that Margot cut ties with Braun after learning about his ties with Nazi Germany. The scene cuts to Gavin Donahue, the FBI agent interrogating Larry. He asks him about his alleged frequent trips to a dance hall famous among homosexuals. When Larry denies the allegations, Gavin questions why he hasn't tied the knot with his girlfriend even after three years of being together. However, Gavin makes excuses and continues to deny all allegations. Meanwhile, Margot visits Von Braun for the Apollo 23 report. He is glad to see her and tries to strike up a conversation with her. It's then revealed that Margot's deadbeat scientist father was a close friend of Von Braun. The latter tells her that her father was absent from her life because he was haunted his whole life by the work he did for the US government. It turns out Margot's father was directly involved with the development of the atomic bomb that was dropped on Japan and killed thousands of innocent people. Von Braun explains that her father had asked him to tell her this secret after his death as he couldn't do it himself. Margot is taken aback and she demands the Apollo 23 report so she can leave immediately. Von Braun hands her the report and tells her that President Kennedy awarded the NASA part manufacturing contract to political allies that helped him pass the Equal Rights Amendment Act. He claims that the subpar rocket parts resulted in the Apollo 23 explosion. He warns her that NASA Administrator Weissner is a close ally of President Kennedy, and he would classify the document to save the president. Back at the NASA HQ, Margot makes an illegal copy of the scandalous report, and orders Weissner to appoint her the new flight commander by threatening to expose President Kennedy's role in the Apollo 23 explosion. Weissner is stuck and he is forced to fulfill Margot's demands. Back on the moon, Gordo is seen taking a walk on the moon, and in the distance, he sees strange red lights, blinking on and off. The scene then cuts to Jamestown. The Apollo 22 crew, Ed, Gordo and Danielle have lived on the moon for 86 days, and they are again told that the launch of Apollo 24 is again going to be delayed by two weeks. This continuous prolongation of their time on the moon has taken a toll both emotionally and physically on them, especially on Gordo. It's then revealed that the Russians have also succeeded in setting up their own lunar base near the Shackleton Crater. Meanwhile back on Earth, hell-bent on exposing Larry as a homosexual, Gavin interrogates Ellen, questioning why a woman of such a prestigious background would want to be with him. He pressures her into coming clean, but Ellen continues to deny all the allegations about Larry being a homosexual. Back at Jamestown, Ed and Danielle discover a strange radio frequency. This and Gordo spotting red lights earlier in the distance makes the crew suspicious of Soviet activity near their base. Ed and Danielle ultimately decide to go out to search for anything unusual and to see if they can find any Russian activity. However, they return empty-handed and to their surprise, they find their base unmanned. Shortly afterwards, Gordo returns back and it's revealed that he had gone for a walk, irresponsibly leaving the base unmanned. This leads to a heated argument and Ed grounds him in the module until further notice. Back on Earth, Weissner talks to Ellen about Gavin's suspicion about Larry being a homosexual. Afraid of another controversy involving NASA, Weissner advises her to marry Larry to put the rumors to rest. Later at a bar, Ellen proposes the idea of marriage to Larry to keep their reputation intact. However, this upsets Ellen's secret girlfriend and the latter threatens to break up with her if Ellen 
and Larry go forward with the marriage. Meanwhile, the Apollo 24 mission is again delayed for two weeks, much to the disappointment of the crew on board the Jamestown lunar base. This further drives Gordo insane. The next day, the crew notice unaccountable land rover tracks near their base. Immediately attributing it to the Soviets, Ed informs Weissner of the situation over video feed. The latter advises the crew to not make any rash decisions, but to take preventive measures to keep Soviets from stealing from them. Later that night, Gordo suddenly wakes up and starts acting like a madman, worrying his fellow crew members. Ed decides to take him out of the module to let him freshen up. However, as they step out, Gordo proceeds to take off his safety helmet, almost killing himself. It finally dawns on Ed that Gordo has lost his mind, and he must be sent back to Earth before he harms himself. However, this means that Gordo's career as a NASA pilot will be over. Therefore, to save him, Danielle comes up with a plan and she accidentally breaks her arm. This makes it possible to send both Gordo and Danielle home with her injury as a cover for his mental instability. So, Ed informs Mission Control of Danielle's injury, and soon after, she and Gordo leave for Earth while Ed stays back to keep the Soviets from hijacking the American lunar base. The episode cuts to 10 days after Danielle and Gordon return to Earth. Ed's son Shane again gets in trouble which infuriates Karen, and she grounds him before she heads for a PTA meeting. After she leaves, Shane sneaks out and takes off on his bike for a basketball game. Later, when Karen returns home from the meeting, she finds two police officers waiting for her outside the house. It is then revealed that Shane has gotten into an accident while riding his bike. In the end, Larry and Ellen are seen getting married in court with one person as their witness. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.